Welcome back, everybody, to episode 7 of the Forbidden Cast. I'm super pumped up today because not only is it the release date for my band's debut album, No Hope Left, I also got my good buddy and former bandmate and previous bass player for the band, Mr. Mark Ireland. Now, I've mentioned Mark on the podcast a few times before, but now I actually have him on here and... This podcast is a lot of fun to listen to. It's uh, we share a bunch of cool stories, old stories that uh, that are pretty fun to listen to and to to have a good laugh at. Mark's again, like I said in the first episode of the Forbidden Cast, Mark is a really funny guy, and uh, he got me laughing quite a bit in this episode. So hopefully, uh, my laugh doesn't hurt your ears too much but uh yeah he's a super funny guy and i really hope people enjoy my interview and just kind of hang out with him um once again just like with lucas the episode was recorded over discord so i will probably still sound the same but mark will sound um a little you know he won't sound as clean and crisp as you know as i do at the moment um, because of course I'm just picking up audio from discord and that's what you're listening to, but it's, it doesn't cut out too much. I don't think it, cut, it cuts out almost at all. Uh, there is other, there's a, a group chat that I'm in on discord that was open during the, the, uh, the interview. Uh, so you might hear a couple of little, you know, discrepancies or whatever you want to call it. Uh, a couple of times, and I, uh, I eventually muted it because there was just a bunch of going texting going on there. So uh, hopefully that won't be too distracting because I think this episode is really worth listening to because it's a lot of fun. Um, so, anyways, without a further ado, uh, I hope you enjoy this interview with Mr. Mark Ireland. How's it going, dude? Ah, uh, it's going pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Just got out of my shower that you almost interrupted with that call, so that was a little <laughs> frightening. <laughs> no, I wasn't, because uh, I know that Discord, usually you can, like, stay in a call for a bit, so I didn't know, like, how much longer you had left on your shower, so I just started the call so that you can just join <laughs> it. <So laughs> oh, okay. I didn't mean to interrupt your shower. <laughs> No, I like. I had like music playing in the shower, and all of a sudden, I hear the phone ringing. I'm just thinking, like, oh no, not now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, how the? Well, I guess I should introduce you to everybody. I guess so. This is Mark Ireland, the original bass player for Forbidden Messiah, and uh, he's the uh, the the guy who came up with the name Forbidden Messiah. And uh, yeah, so here he is. Thanks. Oh, don't forget the the work we did on Massacre. I believe I think that was the first song we ever wrote. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We um, that you uh, we, we you helped out with that, and uh, definitely the lyrics on that. The very first verse on that, you you wrote the entire first verse, uh, and then also on Blood Moon, you helped out with the lyrics for the chorus, which are super cool. The, the Blood Moon chorus, I think that was probably, like, the, the funnest chorus to write because it just sounds so punchy. I know, yeah. Cause like, it, the alliteration on the words. Yeah, it's, um, uh, it reminds me kind of, what's the Metallica song where it's just, like, uh, yeah, it's, um, like, like, Creeping Death where it's just, like, the gang yeah. vocals kind of say, like, one word and then, like, you know, the main vocals kind of do, like, another part and I was, like, you know, it's just like the dun, oh, dun, dun, dun. yeah, the, the the bridge part where they're they're doing the I I I don't fucking know, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, man, what uh, what you've been up to lately? I've been recollecting guitars again. Oh yeah. I now have. Well, my my collection keeps going up and down in size. Technically, I'd have four now, but one of my guitars is in pieces because I have to take it apart and redo the bridge. Is it the bridge? Yeah, I got to give, like, the bridge a vinegar bath because it's my old uh, Ibanez RVX 220. 
Oh, okay. It's it's pretty old, so I got I got to clean all the parts, and I got to file down the frets, and I I got to like just actually pay attention to it this time. <laughs> so, uh, okay, sweet. Uh, what uh, what else do you got uh, do you got in your collection there? Well, I do have that uh, that King V, the Jackson. Okay. The off white. Yeah. That's the one I got from uh, Kevin. I don't know if it was white when he got it or if age turned it to like a cream color, but I'm not like complaining. <laughs> yeah, no, it, yeah, it's super cool color. And then I have like, the one thing I have with Ibanez is I hate it when the names are just slapdashed with like serial numbers and shit. So I got an eight string, but I don't know what it's called because it's numbers and letters. <laughs> <laughs> and then I obviously have my uh, my Dean base, the Flying V. The, okay. I think it's called the Metal Man. Is it? Dean's okay. pretty boomery with its name. Yeah, it's literally called the <laughs> Flying V Metal Man or something like that. Okay. Shit. <laughs> so sweet, man. Cool. Good. Uh, good to know. What? Uh, what you plan for an amp? Oh, uh, probably the most expensive amp I've ever bought so far. Oh, really? What's that? What's that? I've got. I got the EV Studio Pro One Twelve. It's not like very big it's not like very high end or fancy it's not like a, a crate or an orange amp but it's pretty good yeah okay it's so. a trans tube so it's got the the both states in it i got the transistors and the tubes ah. it's got a really nice clean channel oh, but good. the it's more of a studio amp i guess so the the effects on the the dirty side i have to do all with like my pedals oh okay so it's not it's not really like a high gain amp. It's just kind of like a, you know. Yeah, it's got all the, the inputs and outputs. Like, I mostly got it because I wanted to, to use it as the, the, uh, I can't really think. I just basically woke up and got out of the shower. No. But basically, <laughs> I want to work it with a with a cab. Oh, okay. Just to get, yeah. Uh, and then obviously the pedals are always going to do the work for the tone and the sound. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a, it's, it's a, so it's a good pedal platform based amp, I guess. Yeah. Okay. I got it because obviously all my other amps before were just low end and mm. that was when I wasn't playing too often, but now that I'm playing more often, I just thought I'd actually get serious and get better gear, stuff that's going to last longer and actually take care of the first guitar I ever got that uh the RVX 220. Okay, yeah. I'm actually switching out the pickups, and then I'm probably just going to go part shopping online, oh, or nice. even with Kevin, because I told Kevin what I was going to do with it. Oh, okay. Okay, sweet. And uh, I guess for a frame of reference for people who don't know, but uh, Kevin is uh, is the owner of the guitar store in New Liskard, Ontario. Uh, he at the store called Soundcheck Music. So... Just, good guy yeah he plays he plays bass but he uses an eight string and uses that as his bass guitar which i just find just wild yeah it's it's super it's a really weird looking bass it's really cool though oh fuck he has that other bass guitar though or uh, are we talking about the because i remember i saw him and lucas play live and i think that was when we did our live set our first one Oh, and I don't okay. even think he was using a bass. He was using an eight-string guitar running through a bass amp, but he was playing it like a bass. Is that what he was doing? Because I know he does. I'm pretty sure. Because I know he does have a eight-string bass, like a legitimate bass that has eight strings on it. That's ri that's overkill. <laughs> know, if that was a bass guitar, oh my god, that how would you even wrap your hand around the neck, dude? I don't. I have no idea. It's wild. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure it, it has to be an eight string guitar because if it's an eight string bass there's no that thing's he had to play that like a, like a steel guitar on his lap <laughs> basically has like a, a mobile desk at that point <laughs> oh jeez because i know he does have another bass too that has a ton of strings on it um and i think that one might be just a six string though because it didn't look too ridiculous no yeah but the it's cool because the fretboard on it it's like half of it is fretless and then the other half has frets do you know which one i'm talking about i think so yeah it's it's really cool 
<laughs> guitars are just getting wild now. Like, dude, I know it. It's there's. I, I think it's YouTube's fault. <laughs> <laughs> like Jared Dines and all them, they're oh, just like, yeah. Fucking Jet 2019. Guess how many strings is on this guitar? <laughs> More than six. <laughs> But less than 32, it has 31 strings. I don't think it has 31 strings, but he went crazy yeah. on one of his videos. He has like 30, 36 strings on a guitar. And then, yeah. Uh, I guess like a whole bunch of other uh, third-party guitar brands or just like lesser known ones actually stole his design and were selling them super cheap. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't watched like Jared Dine since I was in high school. Yeah, because his his humor never really changed. No, it was the same humor I remember from high school, so it never evolved. So I'm like, you, you know, that's why I like watching like Nick Nocturnal now. It's more serious, I guess. Yeah, it's it's more. I mean, based at a probably a much more mature audience. Whereas like I I remember watching Jared yeah. Dine videos and you know like. uh things band members say in the studio and it's just like, oh. <laughs> <You> know, like... <laughs> drummer beats skins while guitarist tries to tune yeah just yeah just the same jokes just repeated and recycled <laughs> like i didn't mind like his like different style videos because at least those weren't like his comedic ones it was yeah more of like an experiment which i kind of like that i think that's what got me into like uh like uh popular songs covered in like different styles of metal oh yeah 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 for sure um uh did you, actually did you see do you have you ever seen that like joke mountain dew guitar where it's like an explorer shape oh yeah they actually oh my god did you see that they actually made it uh no one can be mad at me but i i kind of i i like how absurd it is yeah <laughs> oh yeah so do i <laughs> Uh, just, just the thought of that <laughs> just it just see youtube youtube is making guitars weird <laughs> the internet it's the internet's fault that guitars are progressing down this weird, weird uh more strings uh outlandish design kind of thing yeah oh yeah it's wild absolutely wild <laughs> <laughs> like I, I remember the weirdest guitar i ever saw was probably like a, a kiesel guitar because the the body shapes just looked a little out there but they looked like it was like there's utility for it like they got cutouts for your hands and shit and like yeah make it more playable whereas we've got a fucking <laughs> mountain dew guitar <laughs> the size of a shed now <laughs> yeah um, I think I remember the weirdest guitar I ever saw was the uh, probably uh, the Warrior guitars from Jackson. The weird, like, all spiky guitar. <laughs> wow. uh, the fucking, the the whole deal with the, the spikier the guitar, the more, like, brutal and more metal it is. Yeah. I just... Yeah, and, and the the pioneer of that is obviously BC Rich, and I remember when I was younger, I was like, "Oh, the BC Rich, like Warlock, oh dude, that's like so sick. I need one of those." And uh, my my one friend Jeremy actually bullied me out of liking BC Rich because he was like, "You know, it's just they're just pointy for the sake of looking cool." And I was like, "Yeah, well, like maybe that's what I like." And he was like, yeah. "You shouldn't like that. That those are guitars for thirteen year olds and forty year olds." <laughs> I was like, damn, that kind of makes sense. Just, yeah, just Edge Lord guitars. Yeah, the the Kerry King guitar. <laughs> yeah, he's with Dean now. Have you seen his earwig guitar? I don't follow any like the old Slayer, or, like Kerry King stuff. Okay. I just remember like his like a white guitar. Did you say earwig? Dude, I'll I'll pull up a picture and send it to you over Discord. But yeah, it's disgusting looking. I hate it. <laughs> because like it's essentially Everything. it's essentially just a v but then like the points on the tip of the v go inwards and like they're still pointy it's oh just... like an sg uh kind of no. like the, the sg horns or no uh fuck I'll, I'll, yeah i'll just i'll look it up here we go uh here it fucking is ew i hate this thing so much <laughs> uh here you go i can't wait to see it i think i know what you're talking about though yeah there you go oh no 
Oh, never mind. Okay, so I see it now. That's stupid. <laughs> uh, I, I, I was thinking of the Zach Wild. Uh, I can't remember if it was a Gibson or if it was a Dean, but it was like a V, but at the the, oh, at the, the neck. Yeah, it had like the SG. That's what I thought you were talking about. But this is worse. <laughs> it's like they. Who would? Uh, why? I think um, so I think this guitar like whenever the Dean came out with it, I it was the, it was, the price was literally like six thousand dollars. I think something absolutely ridiculous like that. You couldn't even pay me six thousand dollars to look at that. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's uh, it's the worst. And with the like a Kaler bridge, yeah. I I went through a phase of wanting and like kind of like had like a huge interest in Kaler because uh, municipal waste. While we're still talking about weird fucking flying V shaped guitars, oh yeah, the municipal waste guitarist. His guitar is the band's logo, like MW, but it's in the shape of a V. Yeah, but you wouldn't really. <laughs> You really know unless you like really looked or paid attention to it. It, it kind of looks almost normal, and then you look at it and it's just M W. Yeah. And on and the the headstock is the the W, so it kind of looks like the it almost kind of looks like that headstock, but not cancer. And, <laughs> <laughs> and that guitar had a, a floating Kaler bridge. Okay. Because uh, I know Dave Mustaine, whenever he was with Jackson in the 90s, he used to have a, uh, a Kaler bridge on those guitars as well. I, uh, I've i never personally used a Kaler, and I mean, I would be interested in using one, but uh, the only thing is, is, like, some of them are fucking weird. Like, where you put the bar in goes in between the strings, and that to me is just, yeah. just super odd. <laughs> I, I think it... I think it has something to do with left-handed players. Like, they put it in the middle of, like, the six strings. Like, dead metal of the, the bridge, right? Yeah, uh... I'll look it up, because honestly, I don't... I'm not 100% sure. Because uh... I saw a, a floating bridge set up, which had the the whammy bar or the trem bar. In the middle? Smack dab, like, right in the middle. Really? In between... Yeah. If, I don't know if you can find it, but if yeah. I'm able to find it today or at some point, I'll send it to you just so you know I'm not crazy. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't doubt it because Kaler is super weird, but yeah. I think the whole, I don't know if they make them anymore because it looks goofy, but oh. I think the whole idea of, did you see it? No, but they supposedly have bass tremolo bars. Yeah, Kaler Ew. has bass trems. Ew. <laughs> yeah, you, you could... <laughs> I don't know why you'd want that, though. <laughs> Do a dive bomb on a base. That, that would actually sound probably like a plane crash. <laughs> yeah. Just fucking... So there's this. This is the one that I was talking about where it's like... It's not on the side. It's like kind of just in just a weird spot. I don't know if that's the one you're talking about. Let me... Let me see. Yeah, it's kind of like that, yeah. but moved like two pins over where it's in the middle, and it's the bar is set farther back, so you could actually still palm mute on it. That's kind of. I think the whole idea with like that Kaler bridge is it's supposed to be um, almost like ambidextrous. Like you could use it left-handed or right-handed, so that way you wouldn't have to like do any weird fucking around with it. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, it looks like where the where the bar, like the whammy bar, is put into it, it looks like the other holes would be able to suit it. So I guess you could put yeah. it in the That's so gross. <laughs> but that almost looks like where the, the strings are sitting, too. I know, right? Like, because they, they are. Like, if you look at the image, they have, like, the, uh, the fine tuners coming out, and then you can see the string coming like out. Like, right from... behind the bar. Yeah. Like... That's <laughs> So what, Kaler? What get on get on that? What are you doing? <laughs> I feel like that's just the way that's set up. Like all that, um, the force you're putting into pulling or pushing on that bar on that floating bridge is just basically seated on one string. Yeah, and that area is probably gonna lose its tone or like intonation like fucking crazy. Yeah, because I know even with like a regular bar setup, like on my Jackson, like I'll lose intonation a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's not bad. I could just use the fine tuners and just get it back into like 
back where it should be. Yeah. Oh, but with yeah. that, it just looks like your one string is just going to be in for a hell of a time. Jeez, man. That looks that looks not good. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, good that the first uh, 18 minutes of this podcast is just shitting on Kale. <laughs> <laughs> well uh just just one or two of the things that they do yeah yeah um, just just aesthetically and maybe <laughs> yeah. i would love to play one i, I don't know it's just because <laughs> yeah no. the thing is with kaler like if you took away the bar i feel like it would be a comfortable bridge to play on because it's like it's so flat and it looks like it would be comfortable to play on just not with yeah. the bar you know yeah, it's super weird. I I don't know. I think I, <laughs> I, I would stick with Floyd. <laughs> yeah, I really like Floyd Rose. I just I hate tuning and stringing floating bridges. Yeah, man. They uh they're a pain. For the longest time I would just get other people to do it when I first got my Jackson. Because I remember looking at it, I'm like, this makes no sense. I can pay <laughs> someone to do this. But then on the like the lockdown and shit. Um, I needed to get my, my Jackson out of D standard and uh, put it into drop D or something like that. Okay. And I remember just thinking, I can't take this to Kevin and there's no one else around here that knows how to do this. So I had to teach myself how to do everything. Did you, did you look it up on YouTube? Yes. Yeah, dude, that I do the same thing. Like whenever I have to do like trust rod ad adjustments and I like I forget what I'm supposed to be doing, I just look up. There's this one, I think a Stumac video where it's like it's this super like sweet humble old man who's like, "All right, so now you're going to take this part off and you're going to make sure you turn it counterclockwise." <laughs> it's just like it's it's so like, "Ah, oh, this is nice." <laughs> The Mr. Rogers of a uh, guitar tuning. Yeah. Uh, or guitar adjustments. <laughs> yeah. So. But now. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, but now that I've, I've done that and I have access to the, the tools I have, I can confidently string, tune, and do whatever I want to that thing now. Fucking A, man. Good to good for you. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. That's good. <laughs> I'm proud of me too. I never even wanted to do any of that. <laughs> yeah, so uh I guess I should ask you how you how are you holding up in all this uh pandemic stuff? How are you doing? Uh I think I gained weight. Oh did well I mean that's okay because I mean you're smaller than a toothpick anyway, so <laughs> Yeah, well back then, but after I started my, my new job, I, I gained like I think like forty pounds and I like started to weigh like just under 180 it was like 175 pounds oh shit well i mean you, I mean, then, you probably put on a lot of muscle mass because eh? that's a because you work for a road construction eh yeah yeah so I mean, it's probably all muscle mass you little buff boy now <laughs> <laughs> little buff baby boy but no like i'm just sitting on my ass now and i'm pretty sure all that muscle just turned into fat i looked in the mirror the other day and i realized i had a gut and i was like i never remember having this my entire <laughs> life <laughs> uh you've been uh you've been drinking lots of beers lately or oh, just a lot of fast food because i just refuse to cook <laughs> yeah it's uh yeah that's fair man it's i don't know i think uh i think this this whole pandemic's got everybody kind of a little bit depressed and just kind of like not in the mood to do a single fucking thing <laughs> Yeah, I feel that, and especially since it's winter time. I don't want to go outside. It's cold out there. Yeah, exactly. So you just you just get delivery most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, Fucking that, and I haven't been drinking as much. I've been smoking more weed than I used to, but. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I been yeah. Been I, I, playing a lot of video games. Yeah, what uh, what you been but, playing lately? Oh fuck! Okay, so I've been playing a lot of like Black Ops, like the new one. Oh okay. But uh, what was? I think I have my Xbox open right now. There's a game I got recently that I've just been playing the shit out of. Huh? Cause I know the last oh. time we were able to hang out, you were playing a ton of that Star Wars game. Mhm. Mm the Star Wars Battlefront Two game. Yeah. I got a oh Metal Gear Rising: The Revengeance. 
Is that a new one? It's an old one. I, yeah, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. It's just, it's not like traditional Metal Gear. It's just crazy, stupid cyborg ninja plot, and (laughs) power cells are in the enemy's spine, so you get points for cutting them in half and taking their spine. And apparently, there's electrolytes in there, so they're just Gatorade fucking vending machines with swords. (laughs) Holy. When I played that game back in high school, and I saw it was on the Xbox store. I was like, I need this now. <laughs> oh, fucking Dragon Ball. I've been playing a lot of, like, Dragon Ball Fighters and Dragon Ball Z Universe 2. Oh, nice. And just watching Dragon Ball in general. Ah, oh, sweet. Sometimes I'll just just put on Dragon Ball and put on, like, an episode already done, and I'll just, like, practice scales. Ah, oh, nice, man. I mean, hey, that's fucking better than nothing, eh? <laughs> Yeah, there's not much to do, so usually it's just either guitar, Dragon Ball, or video games. Yeah, okay. So are you are you off work right now, or are you just, like, laid off for the winter? Yeah, it's late, uh, winter layoff, so I have, like, around, like, five or six months of just doing nothing oh. and getting paid for it. Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the perks. Yeah. But my, uh, my EI fucked up this year. I didn't get ei for like a month and a couple of weeks because there's a, a a problem on my report apparently the company name was put down twice in two separate areas and that fucked me so i had to go in and be like hey i am starving uh <laughs> can i have my money please and they're like yeah and they put me on the phone and shit and they're like here's your problem it was your your uh submission was flagged they're like, well, that doesn't sound good. They're like, yeah, you put the name in wrong in both places. And like, well, can we fix that? And they're like, yeah, we'll do that right now. And I'm like, couldn't you uh, like maybe send me an email saying there's a problem so I can fix it myself instead of yeah, <laughs> holy shit, this shenanigans. Wow, <clears throat> that sucks. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a little rough for the first bit, just going insane, just. Ooh, am I going to be evicted? Can I pay my bills? What's going on? Yeah. Are the lights flickering? They're turning off the hydro. Someone get me a phone now. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I mean, I'm I'm glad you got that figured out because that would have sucked. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, it, it was pretty stressful. Oh, yeah. No, no doubt. No doubt at all. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, so, I guess... Uh, I guess I would like to, if you're up for it, if you wanna, if we wanna talk about uh, how we met and uh, how we got uh, all uh, all this shit going at some point. Because today, technically not today, like at the moment, but in the future when this episode will be released, um, the new Forbidden Messiah album will be out. So uh, yeah, and I heard some of the tracks that you sent me from it, and they're so fucking solid. Right? Yeah. I think they sound really, really good. Um uh, Yeah, I'm I'm down to talk about the origin story. Oh fuck yeah. Do you wanna do you wanna start or do you want me to give the uh, layaway a little bit? You you started off because most of my encounters were inebriated. <laughs> <laughs> so you could probably tell them better than I ever could. Okay, so um I was still in high school. I was in grade twelve, I was a senior and uh and I was like all my life since I think maybe grade eight or seven or something like that. I was like, okay, I want to be a musician. I want to be in a band and I want to like tour the world and all that shit. Um, and then I didn't have a band till grade 12 because I mean, I just never really bothered going out and talking to people. <laughs> so I mean, that's, <laughs> that, uh, that should say a lot right there. Um, but eventually I went to the local guitar store, the same guitar store that we were talking about in the beginning, uh, Soundcheck Music, and I asked the owner, so Kevin, um, if I can put up a flyer in the window to, you know, to hopefully seek out some band members. And then, uh, and then, yeah, and then if I put it up and then a few weeks later, I went back to the guitar store because I didn't hear anything. So I was just like, shit, like. Seriously, there's there's not a single person <laughs> who wants to play some metal music with me. Um, and then I was talking to the owner, and then Lucas was there also at the time. So I was just like, ah, like, do you guys know anybody? And then uh, and then they had mentioned your name. They're like, oh, well, there's there's that Mark guy. 
you know, as, that's in here once in a while. He looks like a metal kind of dude. And then, uh, <laughs> and then, yeah. And then eventually I was just like, okay, um, sweet. So like I, I, <laughs> I creeped you up on Facebook and I was like, okay, cool. But I had noticed on your Facebook that you're already in another band, uh, which, what was your other band's name? Uh, it, there's one or two going on at the time. There's kind of like a like a half solo project where it was just a bunch of our friends just trying to get something started, and we would write basically songs, but individually. So the the guy that would do like uh, lyrics, uh, I think that was Skyler. He would he would just like kind of like write these things and like sing them and like record them, and I would do the same thing with like guitar. And I think the only time we ever really managed to play anything was actually a Three Days Grace song. And I remember just not being into that. Uh, and then the other one, which was actually fun and really cool, was Desert Child, which was like the band Sleep. Like it was just desert heavy stoner rock vibes, like desert rock, which was fun. What, yeah, dude. Like, yeah, because I remember uh, you and I, like, uh, jamming just some stuff out. It wasn't that stuff, but it was just like the same kind of vibe. It's super fun to yeah. just like s- chill in a room and like jam it out. Cause I remember I was on the drums and you were just playing some riffs. It was, yeah, super fun. Like start to finish and just like play for like 13 minutes. And it's just like, holy shit. <laughs> it's just like free form jazz, but with more structure and, and more metal and rock, you know, it's just like ballsier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and wah pedal and yeah. distortion oh yeah um but yeah so i i was kind of hesitant on adding you as a friend but eventually i was just like okay fuck it so i did um i don't know if i added you first or if i messaged you first i think i added you and then i waited because i was hoping that <laughs> you would message me and then uh yeah. eventually you just didn't so i was just like okay fuck it so I messaged you. I'm like, hey, man, like I heard that you play bass and like I think it'd be really cool if we can get together and jam. And then I think you answered me You're like, yeah, that'd be cool. And then that was it. <laughs> 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 so then I was just like, oh, we should try to figure out like some time when we can uh, we can hang out. And then you're like, okay, yeah, cool. And then you're and then you had mentioned you're like, oh, I'll bring my drummer. And I was just like, oh, this dude's got a drummer. Sweet. OK, so we don't we'll have to cut like we won't have to, you know, cut out that part. Um, so that was super cool. And then, uh, we had actually found a day where you were available. Uh, <laughs> and then I was all fucking pumped up all day at school. That's all I could think about is about, you know, going to your place and hanging out and whatnot. And then, uh, <laughs> I didn't even have a phone at this point. So I had to go onto the school computer, go on my Facebook to see if you messaged me and, <laughs> and like just before i was about to head out to go to your place uh i saw that you messaged me and it, you're just like hey man i gotta do some stuff for my landlord sorry and i was just like ah oh, fuck okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> so I, like i walked home all fucking sad <laughs> yeah, i think uh you made me do yard work which is very confusing to yeah 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 because i don't know you had, <laughs> you're like yeah i got like do the leaves or something so i was just like oh man <laughs> i was like really confused because like i i lived with like it was like a big house and i lived with like multiple people like five people but she was like messaging me like oh no i remember she was like do you want extra money if you do this yard work i'll pay you and i was like oh fuck yeah i'll do that <laughs> right, now i remember that yeah 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 but uh but eventually i think yeah it was it was like a weekend or something and uh, because I wasn't in school at the time. Or it might have been uh, like a... I think it would have been the summertime. No, it wasn't actually. It was... Uh, I was on my March break because you... Oh, yeah. You and the drummer, Nolan, yeah, you guys weren't uh, in school anymore. But, uh, yeah, it was the March break because I remember I was like just... I was doing some stuff in my room i think i was uh like recording like some sort of demo just like guitar parts and you texted me and you're like hey man me and the drummer are gonna be at uh sound check later like do you want to come down and join us i'm just like fuck yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> so like 
I uh, I fucking stopped everything I was doing. I went and took a shower, and I was just fucking so pumped to go fucking hang out. And then, uh, and then yeah, and then I was like, oh, like when are you guys going? And you're like, oh, we're already here, man. I'm just like, you fuck, he could have told me so we could all met up there, but okay. <laughs> and like, I didn't have a ride, so like, I like basically ran down, so like I wouldn't miss you guys. Oh, oh, well, uh, <laughs> Mark just disconnected. I don't think he meant to do that. Um, I guess I'll have to rejoin the call. Oh, there you are. Howdy. Oh, what just happened? <laughs> it, uh, it, from my from my computer, you uh, you disconnected. Oh, that. Yeah, no, no sound was coming out, but uh, go back to where you had to run like crazy. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> so I was so from my place, from my parents' place, I ran all the way down, uh, and like halfway, pretty much jogged to get to the to the guitar store, which was downtown, which you guys are at. So I just I really didn't want to miss you guys this time. So I was just like, I have to get down here. <laughs> um, and then I showed up, and we all met, and we were all fucking super awkward and weird. And then, uh, <laughs> and then Kevin, the store owner, was just like, um, "Oh, that's cool, guys. That you guys already look like a metal band, but uh, you kind of got to get the fuck out because you can't jam here." <laughs> yeah. So, so I was just like, "Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, my parents aren't home right now, so and I got a drum kit, I got a small little bass amp, and I got a guitar amp. I mean, we can go try to do something there." So then you're like, uh, "Okay." And then we all went up and we did that and uh, yeah, it was a good uh, it was a good time. We 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 jammed some stuff out. I think you tried to show me a Black Flag song and we we kind of jammed that a little bit. I can't remember what song it was. Yeah, do you? Uh, I think it was uh, not War Inside My Head because that's suicidal tendencies. Uh, my War by Black Flag. Oh, okay. The one that's on uh, GTA 5's uh, punk station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. So then we, we jammed that. I think we tried to jam a little bit of uh, Seek and Destroy, I think. But you're like, oh, I don't mm -hmm. know how to play that. So it's just like, it was just mainly just like you were just playing like the E and A notes <laughs> for a bit. Yeah. Uh, and then, I was... Uh... Because the only part of that I remembered knowing how to play was the the guitar intro, like the like that one. Yeah. But the bass doesn't do that part. No, yeah, <laughs> it does like some weird other fucking thing. But uh, mm -hmm. but yeah. So and then I think before like we like we just called it a day. You were like, oh, just since we're all here, just for fun, we should just like try jamming something out. And uh, and I was like okay uh and i just fucking i i uh what was it that i did i it was the starting of massacre uh so it was just like the dan 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 you know that part there uh but i was doing yeah. i was doing tremolo picking and uh and we kind of were jamming it out we played it a few times but then uh you were like dude what if instead you did that you did gallops and i was just like okay and then we just like <laughs> basically kind of wrote the song there and it was just like this is fucking cool um yeah yeah and then the bass part since it was like really fast gallop picking yeah I, instead of using a pick or my fingers i decided to like slap bass it yeah like use the slap technique which sounded really cool because every time you went like uh the in between the i think it was a third the three and the five uh, I wouldn't like go in between it. I would just do like hammer on and just slap it. Oh, I think you're thinking of uh, No Hope Left. The thing. No Hope Left. Yeah, that. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I. Which one? Oh. Oh, I got confused. Okay, so the the one I was thinking of was would have been the opening on the 2017 demo, which had the. That that riff, but it was like a. I don't know what it was. It was the the guitar solo like intro, but it almost sounded like reversed. Yeah, 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 yeah. But both of those songs were really fun to to play. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I love uh, love. And we also movies. did Bloodshot. Yes, the Bloodshot cover. Um. So 
eventually like obviously like from that point uh that first time that we jammed we were like okay this is cool like this feels like you know something might be in bloom um so what we did eventually is like uh we practiced at my parents place in the basement in my room for a bit and then do you remember whenever we had that little practice space that we went to like literally twice yeah, because it was it was a little hard to actually get in there sometimes. Yeah, because uh, I think they were doing music lessons there too as well. Yeah, um, so that was kind of unfortunate because it was actually kind of a cool little space. Like you know, there was like a half kit there, and they like they had a small PA. Um, mm -hmm. So it was yeah, nice. it wasn't bad. Yeah, but at that point too, like we uh, we didn't even have vocals because we weren't sure if we were gonna try to find a vocalist. I mean, in my head at that time, I was like, I kind of want to do vocals, but I never did it. So it's just like, I don't know how that's going to go. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I think at the first time that we were at the practice space, like whenever we we're just like hanging out, jamming out, um, we went to go do the Bloodshot cover of Morning Sickness. And uh, Bloodshot is a really cool band because it's all people that, uh, dudes that were around the same area as we were so like i mean we knew most of them so like the bass player mm -hmm. of bloodshot was uh nolan's dad uh the drummer the original drummer for further messiah he uh his dad played the bass uh the guitar player was bill hastings um who i mean is just a really really cool dude and is a good friend of ours um uh ash break which my best friends who's my best friend's dad <laughs> so he played the drums and then there's another dude i think his name was andrew walsh and he did the vocals and they did uh i think it was only like five song like a five song demo and uh i just i love it to pieces you should really i recommend checking that out go on to uh bill's youtube page to check it out it's uh Fucking what is it? It's Bloodshot Society's Disease. And check out that demo. It's really good. Uh, but yeah, so we... Our... What's that? Like our 2017 demo almost felt like it took like a lot of inspiration from that too. Oh yeah. Like almost like even in the naming convention, like theirs was the... I already... The Society's something. Society's <laughs> Disease, yeah. And then... Yeah, our... Society's Disease. And yeah. ours was Poisonous Faith. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so a lot of influence from from that demo uh, carried over through our stuff. Um, Some of the guitar tone almost sounds like a little similar in places too, as well. Oh, totally. Well, I mean that that's also has to do because of uh, like Bill's like background in his like musical journey. Uh, he's like a huge Megadeth mm -hmm. and Metallica fan, along with like Dimebag and Zach Wild. You know, so it's like a lot of the same stuff that like you know I'm influenced by as well um yeah but uh but yeah but we did a cover of morning sickness and i remember the first time that i tried to do vocals on that like i i don't know if you remember this or not but like i literally almost passed out like for real <laughs> yeah you almost like hurt yourself like you you were red in the face and you <laughs> yeah. looked like you were gonna pass out yeah just because like i didn't know how to breathe properly and like i just never had done it before and also i was just like because i mean i wasn't like I was familiar enough with you guys, but, like, I also never sang in front of anybody else. So I was just, like, super nervous also. So I was just, like, all of that just, like, kind of gave me, like, a mini panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just, like, yeah, literally almost passed out. So that was gnarly as hell. But from that point on, I think it, uh, uh, it, it got my – it got better. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of passing out, I just remembered uh, one of the stories. I think this is either – during recording or just finished recording and we it was me you and nolan and we like drank until like five o'clock in the morning oh my just god like, yeah yeah so fucking steady yeah i remember that that was great and like you and i made craft dinner at like four in the morning <laughs> and like right after yeah. nolan left because he's just like all right guys i gotta go so he just he, like he walked home to his mom's house and like you and i were just like man i'm fucking hungry <laughs> so we went upstairs and made craft dinner <laughs> 
uh, yeah, that was a good that was a good time. Um, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, and then after that, I think it was like seven o'clock. Oh god, I'm dying! <laughs> it was like seven or eight o'clock in the morning. Like the sun fucking came up, and I'm like, well. I'm going to go home, and you're just standing in your doorway and just looked at me. Because we were just drinking, and, like, no sleep. You're like, have fun with the awake nightmares. <laughs> that was the last thing you said to me before I left the house. And I walked home, that huge-ass walk from, like, you to sound check, yeah. but up a fucking bridge and another block. <laughs> so it was, like, a kilometer and a half walk. And I got home, and I remember going to the bathroom, and I went, took a piss, and went to do up my belt, but then my vision kind of, like, funneled and went, like, gray around the edges, and then went black, and I fell back and hit my head off the bathtub and gave myself a fucking concussion. Yeah, you had a massive bruise on your back. I remember that. Oh, my God, dude, I felt so bad. That sucked. <laughs> <laughs> you cursed me. <laughs> I, think, I think I brought... Uh, you and your ex-girlfriend to McDonald's the next day, though, in, like, my dad's car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, dude, check this out. And you're, like, pulled up your shirt. And I'm just like, what fucking happened? And you're like, I passed out. That was so good. Uh, <laughs> uh, or there's a, that one... That one time, I don't know if you're able to talk about it, if your parents listen to this. <laughs> oh, are you are you talking about what I'm thinking you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, okay, the nice yeah. man that gave us a ride home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, my parents... Should, should we talk about that? Yeah, oh yeah, I mean, like, that's <laughs> like what, like, almost three years ago now? Yeah, totally, yeah, I could totally talk about that. totally they do the influences we'd have on each other. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean... So, Okay, do you want... Yeah, you can, you can start. Hey, so... Uh, very foggy on this, because, again, it also involved alcohol. Yes, um, okay. Um, okay, do you want me to, to set the scene? <laughs> yeah, set the scene. Okay. I need to be there, okay. mentally. Okay, so here's what happened. So, I think my parents are out of town for some reason. Uh, my older sister was home, and, uh, and I asked my older sister, I'm like, okay, is it okay if me and, like, me and the guys, like do a band practice later she's like yeah sure whatever um and then so we did that and we went through the set and we were just feeling really good and like super fucking pumped up and we were like wait what if because my mom left her car at home she was like what if what if we like i asked my sister and she lets us borrow the car and we go get a case of beer and then we just fucking hang out and have a few drinks tonight and like the rest of us were like, oh, hell yeah. So I think we went to Quebec, uh, oh. got a case of yeah, Paps. Yeah, and then... Yeah. That's when Nolan was living with his ex yeah. in, like, a garage yeah. connected to her house or something. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And then, yeah, so then what we did is, like, after we got the beers, uh, we just... I dropped the car back off at my place, and then since it wasn't too far away from my parents' house where Nolan was living, we... Uh, we just walked the rest of the way, so we walked over, and uh, but it was still pretty far. Yeah, it was it was still far enough. It was like at least a good twenty minute <laughs> to almost half hour walk. Um, but yeah, so we went there, and then we just basically drank the entire case of beer. I'm pretty sure. Um, and I keep in mind, everybody, that I was a minor at this point. I was not even allowed to drink. <laughs> I was I I think I finally had my high school graduation finally at this point but uh yeah I wasn't I wasn't old enough to drink <laughs> I think it was only uh 17 No you're 18 at the time cuz you're the one who bought the beer Was I I think so Cuz I, I think I would have been 19 at the time so I was I was legal to drink in Ontario Oh, okay, yeah. So what? Yeah, I wasn't legal to drink in uh, in Ontario, but I was legal to drink in Quebec. Yeah, okay, yeah. Quebec because it's eighteen there. Yeah, so that's where we got the booze because it was also cheaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so that that makes more sense. Um, but yeah, so we we drank basically the entire thing. But me and Mark were just like there was two left, 
And then Nolan's like, okay, guys, I'm tired. And it was only like nine o'clock or something. It wasn't <laughs> even that late. So then we were just like, okay, fine, fuck it. And I'm, I'm just like, you know, Mark, you want to like keep this fucking fun train going by at my place? <laughs> and you're like, hell yeah. So like, but, but like, as we're leaving, you're like, oh, wait, I got to clean my cat litter and, and, uh, and like feed my cats so i'm just like okay we'll just we'll stop at your place first and then we'll go back to my place and you're like okay cool so like it's it is nighttime at this point and like it's getting cold out so <laughs> me only had t-shirts yeah <laughs> me and mark are just <laughs> walking around in probably like actually like mm, like i would say minus one but like at least zero it was cold out um Again, me being a like me not being old enough to drink, we're just drinking straight out of like Paps cans, <laughs> walking down a little stretch of a road <laughs> in our t shirts, like wearing Metallica and Megadeth t shirts and like just wearing blue jeans, walking down the road. Um, you finished yours, but I still had mine. So like you you just crushed yours and like fuck it, like just tossed it. And then I finished mine, but I'm like, man, I'm not gonna litter, I'm nicer than that. So I just held on to the can. <laughs> <laughs> so like I held on to the can and then like next thing you know, like we're just walking, having a good time chatting, and then there's just out of fucking nowhere, we just hear someone like, Hey, uh, where are your boys going? And then we look over, and it's a cop car. And, it's like, there's just a cop. Yeah, and he came up behind us and pulled up. Yeah. just kind of stopped in the middle of the road. Yeah, he didn't He didn't turn his lights on or anything like that. He's just like, uh, where are you boys going? And we're just like, no, I didn't say a single thing. Mark was just like, oh, we're just going to my place. And, <laughs> and then he's like, oh, yeah, where's that? And you just gave him the address and everything. And then, uh, and then he was like, oh, you you boys want to ride? And then, like, I was just like, Mark say no, Mark say no, Mark say no. And then, <laughs> and then, and then like, you're just like, uh, sure. <laughs> so then, so then well, the thing is, is I didn't want to, declining a ride from a police officer implies guilt. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Because, like, in my head, I'm saying no, <laughs> but I'm like, that probably would also be bad if you say no. So <laughs> you did the right thing. <laughs> Um, so the cop was like, all right, so we get into the back seat, which obviously like back seats of cop cars, there's no inside handle. So you, so you can't, and the seats are trash and made out of plastic. <laughs> yeah. And then just like that big grate in the back. So like me and Mark are just sitting in the back seat of a cop car and he fucking brings us to Mark's place. And like, I'm just quiet the entire time and Mark's just like you know having a friendly little conversation with the cop um and like I I look at Mark and I'm like I didn't say anything but like I look down at my beer can and I'm just like in my head I'm like this is my way of telling Mark I'm like dude I'm gonna leave this on the ground I'm not old <laughs> enough to drink your going to grab it when we get out of the car okay like but i was i wasn't able to communicate any of that because it's like i don't i don't want to say anything so i just <laughs> just leave the can on the ground i the cop opens up the door he lets me out and then mark comes out and then like we're walking and like i'm just like heading straight for the house and mark's following behind me and then the cops just standing there looking at the beer can on the ground he's just like uh boys uh you gotta take your can with you and then mark's just like oh sorry officer he grabs it he's like you boys have a good night and you're like oh yeah you too <laughs> and he said make sure you recycle it and he's holding it and you can see that it's a past blue ribbon can and I remember going inside and thinking, like, Brandon, you fuck. I like, I didn't, I didn't know you brought that in the car <laughs> I, until after when you like just like piercingly stared at me. Cause it stared at your lap, which had the fucking can in it. And when I looked at you, and I realized you fucked up. <laughs> And oh I was God. fine that whole time because I thought maybe you dished your can too. I didn't expect you to bring an open beer can into a cop car. <laughs> what and so I, so when I saw it, I was like, "Fuck, that's Brandon's. I don't want him to get in trouble. So if anyone's gonna get in trouble, it's gonna be me." So I grabbed it. So I was gonna take blame for it, but he just said, "Have a good night. Make sure you recycle that can, boys." <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Knowing full well that it was a beer can. And I never thought of this just until now. We probably reached like booze too. He yeah. knew we were inebriated. Because the thing, yeah. I was talking. Yeah. Because like, dude, the thing is, is like, we literally drank an entire fucking like case. Like, I don't know how many there were, but like, those were like the last two beers out of the case. And we drank all the other ones. The, I think it was that big fucking like 48 case or something. That we were gonna <laughs> split between the three of us. Yeah. But Nolan didn't really drink much and we drank so much oh my god yeah and i remember getting in the house and we're just like you shut the door and we're both like ah! <laughs> <laughs> just fucking <laughs> the scenario is playing out afterwards like what if you saw that like dude yeah. we're fucked brandon you're stupid why would you do that <laughs> well because because my thought process of what was going on is like the cop pulled up behind us he clearly saw a can in my hand i can't just drop the can and him being like did you just litter <laughs> so it's like for me it's like i gotta bring the can <laughs> oh my uh, god god that was so, so much stupid stupid shit like that <laughs> oh that was so good though so uh yeah mom and dad if you're watching this i hope uh, i hope you enjoyed that story <laughs> And blanket forgiveness for everything because we didn't expect to be pulled over by a cop while walking. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was like yeah, it was like nine nine thirty at night. We're just like we're walking home. It's cold out. No one's outside except for us in t-shirts. So like, <laughs> yeah. what are the chances that he thought that we were just two chicks from behind while he was just driving up? That would have been uh, <laughs> would have been even better. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, after after that, after we had like a mini panic attack, we just like kind of, you know, just <laughs> calm down. We fed uh, we fed and cleaned your cats, and then uh, and then I called my sister because I'm like I don't want to go back outside. And so my sister came and picked us up, <laughs> and then I think we went. To, I, th I think we went back to my place and we just played like Breath of the Wild, and like I passed out, and like you just stayed up for a bit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was gnarly. Holy shit, man. But yeah, but uh other than that, I man, there there was a there was a few other good stories. Um I still remember the first demo that we did what it was the cover of of uh, Bloodshot, so it's like I remember uh yeah, I remember your poor ears cuz we I was playing with my old shitty drum kit. With the shitty symbols and everything. <laughs> and we didn't have any, like, ear protection. So it's just, like, just me smashing the shit out of those drums. And you're just sitting there, like, this hurts my head. <laughs> <laughs> I remember having a huge headache that day. Yeah. After, like, just going home. Yeah. It, it hurt behind my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And remember recording it with, like, the Guitar Hero microphone? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That, that was before we had the soundboard, so it's just like yeah, everything was mic'd up with that, including the bass and guitars and everything. Yeah, it wasn't like a straight in. We like recorded yeah. through the mic and the amp. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, <laughs> what were we doing? Oh uh, dude, uh, I actually I, before because Emma, uh, I told you for like the deluxe edition uh, of the No Hope Left album. Um, I added the the original demo, the 2017 uh, demo, and then I did tag on uh, that cover that we did, including a cover of uh, Blitzkrieg, which also I wanted to ask you, did you play bass for that or did you not? Because I honestly don't remember. Blitzkrieg, that is Metallica, right? Well, it, the, the band, Metallica did a cover of it, which is like more popular. Oh, okay. Yeah. I remember playing it, but now that you say bass, I don't remember playing bass. Okay. Yeah, cause I, I, cause I honestly can't remember if it's you, uh, you playing bass on that or if like I just did it. But uh, yeah, because by that point I we had actually gotten the soundboard, so it's like we have the very first demo that we ever recorded, which was the cover of, uh, <clears throat> which was the cover of Morning Sickness. And then we did a cover, well, there was the cover of Blitzkrieg, and then we did the actual demo. Yeah. Yeah. So all of that is on uh, the deluxe edition, which I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty uh, excited for 
people to to hear those two covers anyways especially like my vocals they sound so bad on <laughs> on mornings like this. um uh and yeah the, did you... I, I like the beginning of you like singing yeah you, you didn't really enunciate certain words or you'd say them like super french yeah yeah they're <laughs> they not they're not good they were not good. Uh, did I did I ever send you the uh, what it sounds like? Because I had to I like I did my best to remix those drums because they're just so ear piercing. Like they're, <laughs> they sound so bad. Uh, I can't remember if you sent me it or not. Oh, uh, I'll have because I remember you showed me, uh, like guitar and uh, drum tracking. I think the no. ones you sent to me through Messenger. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'll uh, I'll have to <laughs> I'll have to send that to you then, because it uh, it's 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 pretty fun to listen to, um, <laughs> but yeah, I also uh, your bass tone was pretty interesting too. So like I just kind of like added some beef to it and a little more gain, so it's like sounds like kind of better. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know what kind of like bass tone I was trying to go for. Yeah, it was almost like I was trying to like emulate like Cliff Burton, but I don't think that was the idea behind it. No, I don't. I don't think we really achieved that. <laughs> no. Um. But yeah, no. I think it was literally recorded through. I don't know if you played my bass or if you brought your own bass. I honestly can't remember. Uh. But we played. Uh. The. I remember when we did the practices, I used my own bass, but when we recorded, we used your bass. Oh, okay. Yeah, because uh, I used my bass live, and it has a completely different tone than that Jackson bass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, oh my God, do you remember our first gig? That that was really interesting. We played through an, our entire set, and uh, and we were just like, "All right, thank you." And then Brian came up to us like, "No, you guys aren't done." And we're just like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> and we're just like. <laughs> what do we do so we're just literally standing on stage in front of the entire audience just looking around at each other like what the fuck do we play <laughs> and then i did that fucking dr dre song the the fucking on bass oh yeah and we turned that into a jam yeah <laughs> Ugh. and then like i at one point i was just like man i have no idea what to fucking do and i was just like yo lucas you want to come on stage and he's like yeah what's up and i'm like uh, play guitar. <laughs> yeah, and then you sat in the crowd, you fucker. Yeah, because I like, <laughs> I was just like, I kind of went and like, I guess I'll just mingle with the audience to make sure that everybody's enjoying the show at least, because I have no idea what the fuck is going on anymore. <laughs> so I just like, I went running around in the crowd. I'm like, hey, thanks for coming. Did you enjoy the show? Hey, thanks for coming. Did you enjoy the show? <laughs> <laughs> that makes it worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, then, and then like i think you were like texting me on stage you're like dude come back to the stage i was just like i ran back and i'm just like let's play blood moon again i guess and then like and then we played it and then my guitar stopped working because i stepped out of fucking cable and <laughs> just <laughs> fucked my entire rig so it's just like what a great oh. show man i love that show so much such a good memory <laughs> And then we we played at a church thing too. Yeah, yeah, I think that was the last live thing that we did. Um it uh cuz we wanted to do a couple of uh covers. So like we wanted to do three songs, but uh the one song we we're having trouble with. So I think uh, I think that was Call of Cthulhu. Uh no, cuz what I think what we wanted to do was we wanted to do uh Dream Police by Cheap Trick, but I think that was a song that was giving us a hard time. Well, the thing is, is that we, me and you played through it all. Yeah. And it was good. Like, but when we all played it together, like all three of us, it was just hard to pull off for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. And it sucked too. Cause I remember being like super like confident with the vocals and being like, oh, this one's going to be the best one. And then it was just like, it kept falling through and I was just like, God damn it. <laughs> we did. Sh I think we should. No, did we shorten it? Because there's that weird, like, uh... Yeah, there's, like, that weird proggy, like, end section. The bridge the... part. That was, yeah. like, a synth. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we, like, skipped that part. But, yeah, it still fell apart pretty hard. We... we did Jukebox Hero, which was fucking fun. Yeah, and we did a fucking pretty good job at it. I don't know how my vocals sounded, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I remember having fun with that one. 
And then was Call of Cthulhu the one that we actually played? Yeah, we didn't just do Jukebox Hero. No, yeah, we did Jukebox Hero, and then yeah, we just kind of like pulled Call of Cthulhu like out of our asses at the last second because we're just like they want us to do two songs, and we don't have another song right now, so we're just gonna do this. We learned that backstage. Yeah, and we're just like not backstage, but like off to the side while everyone else was like playing. Yeah, because we're just like we just gotta do something because <laughs> we're like we we're... could pull we could fucking play dream police but we could pull call of, uh, call of cthulhu out of our ass well, while it... other people are playing their music yeah well the thing is is like it was like it was like a half-assed like a jammed version of it <laughs> yeah from what i can remember so it's like yeah <laughs> really really interesting stuff <laughs> Oh man, yeah, it was some it was some good times. <laughs> then after that, that's uh, that's when shit really started to go south. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, but you and I still like jammed every once in a while. Like you'd come over and I'd just play some drums to like whatever guitar parts you were playing through. So yeah, that... yeah, and the the one time you came to my new place. Oh yeah. And I... I think that's when I got one of my new guitars and you tried it out. I, th I think it might have been that Ibanez hollow body. Oh, yeah. Do you still have that thing? Yeah, eh? No, I sold that to Jaden. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you, but do you... I think I that that hollow body was in G standard as well. Because Holy that was shit. what I was using for doom metal. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, cause... So it was just... Like the the low tuning and the hollow body and the the effects that was running through it just made it sound so like full like <laughs> like it was doing the work of two guitars. Ah, <laughs> oh, man, what a what a trip down memory lane that was. That was good. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then and this this one was recently when I was like trying to get a switch when you're I think. You're oh, just getting off shift at Walmart. Yeah, yeah, because I, uh, I mean, I've already said this on the podcast before, but yeah, like I had moved back home for like three months, and I got my job back at like the Walmart back home, and uh, and yeah, and like I, it was just like yeah, like, coming off of work, and like you were there with uh, George, I think. Yeah, yeah, you're looking for a switch, and you're just, there was no like actual switches. There's only like switch lights. And you're like, man, I want the actual switch. <laughs> and I was just, <laughs> yeah. And then literally the uh, next you... day. <laughs> they, yeah, I had to get a, a switch light that day. And then the next day, they actually came in with the real consoles. And you messaged me saying, I hope you didn't buy a switch light because the actual switches are out now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Your helpful advice was just buy three more switch lights and like <laughs> summon a full size one from those. <laughs> that, that certainly does sound like something I would say. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! God damn! Yeah. Oh man, I was getting high halfway through this. That was probably <laughs> the best choice. <laughs> Is that why you were dying earlier? <laughs> Yeah, the, that cough. I was trying to pass it off as laughter. <laughs> Pained laughter, apparently. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, man, holy shit. Thank you so much for coming on. It's been a blast. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> hey, man, we'll, shit, we're, we'll have to do this again at some point later down the road. <laughs> oh, no, we definitely do. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, man. Well, you fucking you take her easy. I'll uh, I'll catch you later. All right, you take it easy too. <laughs> See ya, man. See ya, dude. Well, everybody, that was Mr. Mark Ireland. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that interview. It was uh, really really fun to do that, and uh, I would definitely love to have Mark on the podcast again. Be really cool to have Mark and Lucas on the podcast at the same time. It'd be interesting to see those two just the dynamics between those two <laughs> but 
But uh, anyways, yeah, I want to do a little bit of self-promoting just because, you know, you gotta. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if anybody at all is interested, please, please, please go check out Forbidden Messiah, No Hope Left. It's out now on all streaming platforms and uh, it would mean a lot. And if you want to check out some guitar playthroughs of the songs, you can go check that out on the Forbidden Messiah page. Uh, and also, I don't know if it will be out yet, because I haven't even started working on it at the time this is being recorded, but um, hopefully the mini documentary will be out as well, but I uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's going to be the case or not. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching, I guess listening as well, everybody. It means a lot to me. And uh, if you want to support Mark further, I believe he still has his Twitch account. Uh, you can go follow that on uh, on Twitch at Ireland Anthrax, I believe is what his name is. I'm pretty sure it's on his Facebook and his Instagram, which again, his name is Mark Ireland. And on Instagram, I'm sure you can probably just look up Mark Ireland. I think he's, his profile picture is him standing with a skateboard or, or something. <laughs> But uh, yeah, definitely, definitely go check out Mark's stuff. He's a, I hope you've noticed from this podcast that uh, super, super funny guy and uh, definitely worth your time to go check out some of his stuff. But I'm going to wrap it up now, everybody. So thank you so much for watching yet again and uh, have yourself a wonderful rest of your day.